Um, juste un petit mot en français, vite fait. Uh, je, vais le, je vais la faire en anglais parce que j'ai essayé d'y réfléchir dans ma tête, essayer de faire ça en français. Je crois qu'il n'y a pas moyen. Uh, je ne peux pas traduire les mots au vol et je ne peux pas trouver mes mots assez facilement. Donc, uh, je vais le faire en anglais, comme ça, ça donne aussi une opportunité aux autres speakers qui ne parlent, parlent pas français d'assister à quelque chose. Uh, voilà. J'espère que ça ne vous dérangera pas trop. Et si vous voulez quand même poser des questions en français ou quoi, il n'y a pas de problème, vu que je parle relativement bien français toujours. Ok, alors on va commencer. Um, just, yeah, shortly about myself, I'm doing uh, just internet -y things um, and doing composer, uh, composer maintain, maintainership as well. Um, and lately I've been working at teamup.com, so that's like my making money job uh, because open source and conferences does not pay very well. Um, so let's dive in. So we have uh, first of all concepts. Uh, so basics, uh, I'll follow these, uh, these color codes along the, the way. So we have patterns, which is basically the, the regular expression itself. Uh, the subject string is, uh, is in blue, which is like what you're matching against. And then uh, what comes out of the engine is the matches, and that will be in green. Um, so I'll go over the basics, uh, because I want to bring everyone up to speed. And then I'll dive into more advanced things uh, afterwards. So um, basically, regexes are made of two things, characters and meta characters. Um, So characters are just like regular text, anything that does not have special meaning. And meta characters have are some characters that are given a special meaning in the in the regex engine. So by default, like these two match basically the same. They just match you. Uh, it's probably pretty simple. Uh, you can escape those by using the backslash if you want. Or you can also use the, this backslash Q to backslash E uh, escape so that anything in between there, um, so between the backslash Q and backslash E is basically escaped. So this is just a, a literal string. There's no more meta character in there. So those two are equivalent again. Uh, then we have character classes. So that allows you to express, express already some uncertainty. Um, So you say, I want one character that's either an A, a B, or a C, or a D. Uh, and that's just like with those brackets, you, you get one character of these. Then you can you do the same with ranges. So just say anything between A and D. That's easy enough. The problem is this is just like code points. It's not, it doesn't have any kind of smart understanding of what you're trying to do. So if you do something like matching from capital A to lowercase Z, Uh, you're gonna match here like the, the full alphabet, which is fine. But then in the, in the ASCII table, you have a bunch of characters here that you probably don't want to match. So just be careful with that. Like this is really about code points. Uh, then finally, you can negate a class. So just doing the inverse of it uh, by adding the, the caret in front. Um, so yeah, this just says like anything that's not between A and Z and uh, over space. Uh, again, escaping the few meta characters that are actually still meta characters in those, but most of them are not. So like a dot, for example, does not have to be escaped. Uh, in the character class, a dot is just a dot. Uh, so this is useful for, again, like if you think of it as, as being code points, uh, if you want to, let's say, just remove all the, the control characters, you can easily match them with that. Uh, so with the backslash x, you do a hex escape, and you say everything from hex 0 uh, to 1f, which is all the control characters. Then you can match them, remove them maybe, or something like that. Um, you can also do um, like Unicode. Um, so in this case, we see that we, we just use the extended version of the, the hex with the, with the curly braces, and this allows you to, to match like Unicode code points. Um, and like, yeah, between this and that, which are the, the two codes here, uh, you have a, a few more rectangles and things. Uh, not sure if it's useful, but you can do pretty funny looking characters as well. Uh, 
So again, like this is completely equivalent, right? You have the, the actual character or the, the code point directly. It's, it's pretty much the same. Uh, since those are pretty long and, and kind of cumbersome to write, uh, they added uh, like shortcuts. So you can, you can just express those like with the backslash W, you say any word character, which is like A, A, Z, and 0, 9, and then the underscore. Uh, so that's typically useful for maybe variable names and, or just like text. Um, and then you have the, the opposite by using the, the capital W. So backslash capital W means anything that is not a word character. Then you have the same for digits with D and the opposite again with, with capital D and then S for white space. Uh, white space includes also like vertical tabs and some sort of weird characters that we don't see often. So just keep that in mind that it might not be exactly what you want. And then finally, we have a ton more of these. Uh, for Unicode, there's really a, a lot of it. Uh, you have things like uh, maybe Thai alphabet characters and you know Chinese alphabet, and then you can have a Latin alphabet to, that will include like the letters with the accents. Um, but again, you have to watch out a bit because the, the Latin alphabet, for example, includes accents, yes but also I think all the mathematical characters in Latin, which includes like tons of stuff that you don't expect. So make sure you, you understand what you're actually matching there. Anyway, there, there's a link, so if you wanna go check them out, you can. Um, the dot, as you probably know, just means anything, uh, except like by default, it means anything but a new line. So that's really anything until the end of the line. And then in PHP, you have this S modifier uh, that if you add at the end of the regex, you, you add the S modifier, then it means the dot will really be anything, anything. Um, in JavaScript, though, you don't have that. Like the, the S modifier does not exist. So if you want to match anything at all in JavaScript, like you can use this kind of trick of saying, I want to match anything that's a space or not a space. And that includes really everything. Um, just a little thing to keep in mind. Um, then we have sub patterns. So sub patterns, just like with the, the parentheses, um, it creates a new subgroup. Uh, in this case, we use the alternation as well with the, the pipe. Um, that means we match either bomb or boys. So it just takes any of the, the branches in there. Um, those, by default, they create a match as well, right? So if you use a preg match, for example, you're, you're gonna have uh, a match that's numbered. So every parenthesis will count match one, match two, match three, and so on. And this tends to be problematic um, because your code then looks kind of weird if you use like dollar match one, dollar match two, dollar match three, and it's not very readable. Like it doesn't say what these things are that you're putting together. Uh, so if you have a lot of match groups, it tends to be really messy. Um, and the, the other problem with it is especially if you change the regex, like two months later you come back and you add something and you add a match, then everything else is offset by one, right? Um, so suddenly your match five becomes match six and you have to update all the numbers below and if you miss one, you just introduce the bug. So not so great. So one thing I would really recommend doing is using the, this named sub-pattern thing. So with the question mark P there, you can then name it. And then uh, in the matches, instead of being one, it's gonna be called first or last or whatever. And then this already documents your code a lot, uh, but also it means that you don't have this problem of the offsets changing once you modify the, the regex. So definitely something to keep in mind. Um, yeah, this, so one problem there as well to, to watch out for is that the first match wins, right? So if you have two things that kind of conflict like this, once it matches Bob inside Bobby, then it stops because it matched something, right? So if you invert them and put the, the more specific one on, in, the, in the front, then it does actually what you wanted. 
you can also express it, express it with, a, with an optional sub pattern like that. Um, it's pretty much the same. Um, and this one uses the, this question mark colon, which means do not create a, a match group for that. So it, it's a sub pattern, so you can do things on the sub pattern, like apply the question mark, but it does not create a new match. So you save memory and you don't create this offset problem as well. Um, yeah. If you have any questions, by the way, at any time, feel free to interrupt. Um, so quantifiers, they, they just let you deal with all this uncertainty, which is in, in the first place really what you use regex is for, right? Um, if, you, like if, if you know exactly what you're matching, you don't need a regular expression. You can just check if it's equal to that. Um, so the quantifiers let you say that something should be there like zero or one time, for example. Um, so that's just optional kind of. Uh, with the star, you can do uh, zero or more times, and it's just up to infinity. The plus means that it needs to be there at least once. Again, once or more. And uh, if you need more fine-grained things, you can use the, the, the curly braces and say, okay, I need like three, uh, between three and five times of, of, of this. Uh, so just real quick examples. Here we match Jamaican or Jamaicans. So Jamaican matches, fine. Uh, but if, if there's an S, it's also okay. Uh, this one matches ST or STO or STOO or STOOO and so on. Um, this one needs at least one O, but more is also okay. And, sorry, um, this one matches one or two pairs of A's. Uh, so, it's kind of weird maybe, but so here we have two pairs of A's and then it stops the match and starts a new match group uh, for two pairs of A's and then it's only one pair of A uh, available. So it does not take the third one there because it's not a pair. So we need the, the whole sub pattern. Um, then you can turn these like by default, those quantifiers, they are greedy, which means they will try to match as much as possible. But you can make them lazy uh, by adding a question mark on, on top of them. And in that case, they will just match as little as possible. Now, um, it's a bit confusing maybe because basically you just add this question mark but it's not the same question mark anymore. Like there's the quantifier question mark and then there's the making a quantifier lazy question mark. So it's, just watch out, like context matters there. Um, but you see the difference that it just matches pairs here and every time it has a pair, it just stops. It does not try to match up to two pairs because one is enough, so it stops after that. Uh, and this is kind of useful in, in cases like this where I know people always say don't, don't match HTML, but it, it just illustrates the problem very well. Um, if you have multiple tags and they have like opening and closing and you want to, to find the content of one, then by default, as it's greedy, it's just gonna match everything until the last closing tag, like from the first opening tag to the last closing. And that includes some closing and so on. So that's not really what you want, but if you just add the question mark, then suddenly it, it goes back to matching only what, what it needs to. Um, the inverse of that, is to make them possessive. And that's done with a plus. So not, not this plus, that's just a regular quantifier that says one or more time. But if you add one more plus to it, then it becomes possessive. And what that means is it will match and it just cannot give up matches. So let's, let's just try and explain that. Um, so in the first case here with two Gs, what we match is we match trig and then the, the G plus there will match the two Gs because it's one or more Gs. Um, and then it goes back and after it's done matching all the Gs, it checks and it says, oh, I need another G after that. 
And after all the Gs, there's no G left. There's an E, so it's like, oh, okay, that doesn't work. So I'm just gonna give up one G and try again. And it tries again, and then it finds a G, and all is well. On the other hand, if you add another plus there, then it becomes possessive, which means it cannot do this, this step where it, it says, okay, now drop this one and you know, try again. It will just say, okay, if this didn't match, so no match. So really, like it captures the first two Gs there, and then there's no G left, so it has to give up everything and just fail the, fail the match entirely. I'll get back to that uh, later on. Um, anchors let you define like anchor points, so just saying like this must be at the beginning of the string or at the end of the string. Um, with the M modifier, they also mean like beginning and end of line instead of the string, so that it just becomes like a line match. Uh, so in this case, we see we, we match like um, an email address, like some sort of an email address. Don't use this to really match email addresses, I think. Um, and like with the M modifier, we would just match like all of them separated with, uh, with new lines. So that's fine. Um, there's one problem though is most people don't realize that the dollar sign actually doesn't mean end of the string. It means end of the string or the end of the string before a new line. So if the last character of the string is a new line, then it still matches. And that's kind of messed up. Because suddenly we say, okay, do I have a valid email here? And it says, yep, you have a valid email, and then there's a new line, but that's fine. Like, don't, don't worry about it. <laughs> but then if you, if you use that and just store it in the database, or I don't know what you do with it, uh, you might end up with some fairly interesting bugs. Uh, or maybe even security issues, I don't know. Um, so how can you fix that? You can use the, the backslash Z. So uh, like for, for the beginning, it, it kind of means the same. The backslash capital A there is it's pretty much the same as this one. Um, but for the end of the string, it really may, means like end of the string and that's it. So you have like this backslash A and backslash Z is absolute beginning and end of the string. And as you wish, yeah, um, as, you, as you can see there, uh, with the, the N it does not match anymore, so we can ensure that it's really uh, only matching what it should do. Um, then we have back references. So, Let's say you want to match all strings, right? Let's like quoted strings. Um, like the simple thing would be to say, I have some sort of quote, single or double quote, and then word characters, and then another quote. The problem is uh, you see there, we have a mixed one, which is not valid, and we don't want to match that because it's not an actual string. Uh, it's just a, a broken one. So if we use back references, we can easily fix that and say, I want first a single or double quote, and we create a, a sub pattern here. And then we have the word characters, and then here we just reference back to the, to the first group. So we say, okay, there I want exactly the same as what matched in the first group. And that just fixes the problem. Um, again, you can use the, the named sub patterns for that if you like. You know, this this one is pre a pretty simple example, but if you have a longer regex, naming them and referring to them by name can also help with the with clarity and, and just like having self-documenting the regular expressions. Um, so again, like name sub-patterns, and then you just do a question mark, P equals, and that just refers to the name. Um, then going a bit more advanced, we have look ahead and look behind. Uh, these, I believe, are not available in JavaScript. So unfortunately, like not all the engines are, are the same. Although I think they're talking at the moment about adding a PCRE, like, like the, the, the full regex support somehow to JavaScript at some point. Uh, so maybe in a year or two, uh, you'll see that coming. 
So if you want to match um, worlds that are surrounded with, with stars, um, let's say you're doing a markdown kind of parser or something like that, um, again, like the na naive approach would be to say, I have a star and then some world stuff and then another star. And it's fine, it kind of matches, but it also matches the stars and you're just interested in the world, so how could we fix that? Um, we can use those back references and uh, the, the look aheads and look behinds to, to assert that there we have the world and we want to say that before the world we have a star and after the world we have a star but those look ahead and look behind, what they do is they just check that this is true, but they don't actually match it. So they don't capture the string. They just take a look and say, okay, yeah, it's there, so it's fine, it matches. Um, it's, a, it's a small difference, but it, in some cases, it's actually quite useful to, to, to say that you want to match something that is preceded by something else or followed by something else. Um, if you want to do the opposite, so matching strings that are not, par uh, not surrounded by, by stars, then um, that would be a good example. Uh, you say, okay, I want something that is not, so there you have the, the um, lesser than means look behind, and with the equal it's a, it's a positive assertion, and with the, the exclamation mark it just means negative assertion. Um, you see there, though, that it doesn't quite work, right? Because we match the middle of the strings, um, and that's not really what we wanted. Um, the reason is obviously that, well, maybe not so obviously, I don't know, <laughs> uh, that you have world characters here, and when it's at this point between K and E, it's a, it looks behind and it sees, okay, do I have a star behind? Nope there's a K behind, so it's fine. And so it starts matching and until the point where at the P there, there's a P behind, there's no star, so it still matches and that's, uh, after that it cannot match anymore because there's a star. So that does not quite cut it. Um, and there's, a, there's an easy solution as well to this one uh, when you know it, is the, the backslash B. So backslash B is just another of these um, kind of shortcuts that expands to this kind of monstrosity. Uh, <laughs> it's actually pretty simple, but it looks really complex. Um, it just says that on one side you have a, a word character, and on the other side you don't have a word character. Or the opposite. So it, that's really all it does. Um, so it just tells you that you are at the boundary of a word, and there is word stuff on one side and non-word stuff on the other side. So if you add this backslash B around it, then suddenly it works because it cannot match in the middle of the world anymore because there's no boundary at the middle of the world. Um, conditionals are, generally speaking, a, a bad idea because um, it's like starting to build logic into your regular expression. It is not really gonna help you <laughs> uh, in terms of clarity. So I try to avoid it if you can. I just want to say that it's possible because sometimes you really need it, but in general, if you're in PHP or something, uh, just you rather do a match and then do the if statement in PHP and say, if it matched, then I will do another preg match or something like that. Because if you expand these into, into gigantic things, um, yeah, it's not, not quite readable at some point. Um, then you have delimiters that uh, basically, as far as I know, they're only there to, to, to have the, the modifier at the end. Um, I'll get to modifier in a second. So delimiters by default, they're slash kind of by default in the, in the human psyche. I don't know why. Uh, I think because like in JavaScript, you have to use the slash to define a regex. And I guess in Perl as well before that and so on. But in PHP, there's really no, nothing forcing you to, to do that. So if you match URLs and stuff like 
this happens quite a lot in, in PHP uh, to just match a URL, for example. And you end up having to escape all the slashes because you made this slash the delimiter, so you have to escape it, otherwise it means the end of the, of the regex. So it's not so nice looking. Uh, if you use like brackets, for example, uh, like curly braces or even parentheses or anything, uh, it's just a bit more readable, you know, it, it, it helps a little bit, so why not do it? Um, yeah, just, just consider that. Yeah, but that's only valid in PHP as far as I know, or like in, in PCRE languages, which I'm not sure, maybe Python as well. Uh, anyway, uh, another thing is to use single quotes because uh, single quotes are like they, they already save you from escaping some stuff. If you ha have double quotes and then the backslash to escape, and then like you end up having to to escape a lot of things in the in the patterns. So after the pattern, uh, after the um, the delimiter, you have those modifiers. So I already mentioned a few of them, but you have I as well for the the case insensitive. Um, the S that's again not available in JavaScript. Uh, U, you need it for Unicode. And so if you wanna use those backslash X, something like with the, the long Unicode stuff, you need the X, uh, the, the U, sorry. And if you, um, uh, what's the other use case for them? Uh, yeah, for the, for the character classes as well, like there's a backslash P, L, something, something. Check the docs for those because yeah, they're not so important. Um, the, the capital D lets you turn the dollar into a backslash Z. Like it, it means again that the dollar is really at the end of the string. So if you don't want to use the backslash Z, you can also just use the, this, this instead. Um, and finally you have X that enables free spacing mode, which means that you can have white space that is not meaningful anymore. So let's just have an example here. Um, Let's say you have this. Now you could use comments, right? You can always use comments like that. Uh, but if you add comments in the middle here, it's gonna be quite messy. Like you suddenly have this long line and it's really hard to, to read. So if you add the X, you can split up the, like you can just add white space and it doesn't care anymore. Like it doesn't look at the white space. So here we say we want one of these like googly eyed characters. Um, and then a space and then something. And again, like this, for example, you probably want to comment that because it, nobody has any clue what the hell you're doing there. Um, so if you add uh, the X, you can split it up in multiple lines and you can explain that this is a pile of pool character. And um, so you can just explain the whole thing and you see that it matches. Um, the key though, like the one thing to, ma to, to watch out for is that since the spaces don't mean anything anymore, to actually match a space, you need to escape it. So in this case here, we escape this space to mean that we really want to match a space. So just one little catch, but otherwise it really enables you to, to do like very, very long things like this one, for example. Um, and that's page two of it. Um, <laughs> but it's, you know, there's a lot of comment, like all this is just comment and a lot of white space. And so it's, it remains somewhat readable. Like I know it's, it's a bit long to just dive in like that, but you know, it's a lot better than if it was all on one line without comments, uh, because there is no chance you ever touch it again if it's like that. <laughs> all right. Um, so I just wanna explain a bit how the engine works because I think that's really important to understand um, if you want to just like, if you know how it works inside, it, you kind of, it, it demystifies the, the regexes a bit because it, suddenly you start realizing, okay, it failed because of that and not it failed because, uh, which is <laughs> a big improvement in, in terms of skills. Um, so I mentioned that already, the, the first match thing, um, just keep it in mind. Um, on the other hand, it's also, it will also prefer to, 
prefer a match over a non-match. So in this case, we could we could say uh, it should match like set. Um, it, it will match set first, right? Um, and if we look, so I have this debugger view there, where you see that actually uh, what happens is it it tries to. Um, so it tries the, this this block first. It matches set. So that's the the engine. Sorry, I forgot to explain. But on the on the left you have the the pattern and you have the engine head. So you have two heads in the in the regex engine. You have like the the pattern head and the match head, and those are two kind of pointers in the string that that keep moving. And um, so on the left in the pattern there it follows. This, it goes set. It matches all those set characters, and that's fine. Then it jumps to the end here, and it tries to match bar, but that does not match here. So what happens is it just gives up that that, that match um, and tries the other branch. So it, just, it goes back into it, and that's why it says backtrack. So it, it say, that just means really that the, 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 the um, pattern head of the engine went back into the pattern. So it, it jumps back at some point. This is not necessarily bad, like as in this case, it, it's not it's not horrible, but in some cases it can be um, it can lead to an error. Like at some point you might have seen that that it says allowed backtracking limit exceeded, and you get an error and it just fails. Um, but the backtracking limit is like a million or two millions or something, so it's it's quite high, and to reach it you really have to mess up badly. But uh, it's important to know, I think, what this backtracking means. Like, it really just means that the engine had to keep trying and, and go back in the pattern. Um, anyway, so it goes back, it tries the, the set foo, and then it again tries bar, and all of that matches. So it matches the full string, uh, even though at first it tried the, the, it tried the first branch and it had a match there, it just it had to give it up because it prefers to match the, the whole thing than just a bit. Um, so the, the backtracking, it's just to have a, a quick example of, of a, a case where you could end up with a really bad, uh, a bad regex. Um, so if we look at uh, this, email, this email pattern I had, uh, you just, so you have like non-at characters in in the beginning, and then you have uh, followed by an at, and then you have this the, the first bit of the domain, and then followed by a dot something, and that's that whole block is like repeated multiple times in case you have like dot co dot uk domains or those kind of like subdomain addresses. Um, so if we look at a case that works, it's, it's pretty simple. Like the, the first bit is, is pretty straightforward. It just matches everything. There's nothing special happening. Um, then at some point, uh, so here you see that it backtracks, and that's just because we have the plus. And so it says, okay, I matched uh, .co, but there's a plus, so I have to keep trying. So it just goes back into it and keeps trying and it matches .uk and that's fine and then backtracks again and it tries to match a dot again but there's no more dot to be matched so it stops goes to the end and tries to match the end of the end of the string and it's there so it's fine matches great um, now what if we have a, a bad email that has a dot at the end so it's invalid now we see that the pattern is not as nice anymore because we have this, this red, uh, and red is bad, right? So uh, up to this point, I guess it's the same, yeah, until the, the dot foo, so you just match those, those domains and that's all good. But then here it matches the dot, so it tries again, it matches the dot and that's fine, but then it does not match what follows. So it's like, okay, that didn't match, so I'm just gonna skip, try and see if I'm at the end of the string. And it's not at the end of the string because, well, so when it gives this up, it has to give up the dot as well, so it's not at the end of the string anymore, it's just at the end of foo. Um, then 
So since that does not match, it just gives up one character again. It, it gives up the, the last order, and it tries again. Let's see if now I have a dot something. Nope. So it's still no dot something. Let's see if I'm at the end of the string. Nope. And so on, so on, so on. And it just like drops character by character everything until it's done not finding anything to match. Um, so as you see, this can take a lot of steps. And like if you post a, an email address that's 10 megabytes, uh, it will do 10 million steps to one by one drop the characters. So that's one way you could get this like uh, limit exceeded, for example, even with a very small, like fairly simple pattern. So how can you fix it? You can use the, um, the possessive uh, quantifier. So if you just watch the, the regex, I just add one plus. So here at the end, I just add one plus and make the, the subdomain possessive. And then suddenly what happens is it still fails and it still backtracks and like drops stuff, but instead of dropping it character by character, then it, it drops it subdomain by subdomain, right? Um, so you see that it, like within two steps here, we go back to matching nothing and failing uh, in a total of 20 steps instead of 32. But if you post, again, 10 megabytes, then you're gonna fail in 20 steps instead of 10 million. So in that case, the, the, the improvement's a bit better, right? But what it really means is that this is way more like kind of constant time and as opposed to just trying random stuff until it fails at some point. So this is way more controlled and, and will run a lot faster in general. Um, so what can you do with this? Um, one quick example is like to just like strip prefixes or suffixes. Um, you know, this is something that you could easily do with like the, the string functions saying, oh, if string pause of, uh, of this like dev is zero, then I take a substring of the, skip the first four characters, no, no, no. It works just as well, but to me, it's like I, I tend to do it like that by default uh, just because I'm used to it. And I think it's it's good because it keeps your your skills fresh in a way. Like if you keep using it for for very simple things, then you don't forget how to do it, right? While if you just use a regex once every six months, then probably you're just gonna have forgotten everything, and it's it's a pain and to to get in every time. So just try to to do these simple things maybe uh, on a more regular basis. Um, it's a bit longer example, but just something I like to to highlight. Um, this is from the from the composer code base, and it's uh, it's the part that matches the the class names in a file. So if you use this class map autoloader, or if you use the the optimized autoloader flag, basically what we do is we scan all the PHP files and try to find class names in them. Now, like the, the obvious correct way to do this is to use token get all. Right? This is there's just no no question because there you use the PHP lexer to actually tokenize the file. You get the tokens back. You run through them. You see when there's a class token. You get the next one. It's a name. Super easy. It can't go wrong. Um, so why are we stupid and doing it like that? Uh, <laughs> Uh, because actually it can go wrong with the token get all, and it did pretty quickly, because initially we were using that, but people have sometimes like a PHP file with just five megabytes of text with you know comma separated values or something in an array, and when you load that with token get all, it just blows up your memory limit. Um, you know, this and other, other problems of, just like a, a bunch of issues. So also it wasn't very fast because you have to loop through all the tokens no matter what the, the file is because you might have like two classes in, for example, so you have to check all the tokens just in case. Um, so this didn't pan out very well. So we did it with regexes and now it's a lot faster and a lot more memory efficient actually. But if you think about it, like 
a lot can go wrong. Like matching class names in a PHP file, you can have the word class followed by something in a lot of places, right? Like you have strings, you have comments, you have a lot of stuff that is not an actual class and that you should not match. So, like it, intuitively, it's really a bad use case for regexes. Um, but what we managed to do there is to limit the scope of the problem to the point that we can actually safely match it with regexes. And this is really all it does is just like removing the here docs blocks, removing all the strings, uh, all the non PHP code blocks, and like, uh, well, non code blocks. Um, and so on, and so you, you remove everything and then you end up with this bare bones PHP thing that is kind of broken, but it doesn't have any uncertainty in it anymore. It's, you know that it's only tokens that are valid, there is no more string or anything, and so if you match class followed by something, it has to be valid because otherwise there would be a syntax error. So this is important, I think, to to realize what the, like what your domain is and if, even if it sounds crazy, um, you know, maybe there's a way to kind of limit it to a, to a same level. Uh, you can also like, let's say splitting tags, that's a, it's a very simple example that always annoys me if you have a, a tag list and they're like, you must separate your tags with commas. And then the other website is like, you must separate tags with spaces and you never know which one to use. Uh, if you use pre-split, you can easily support both. Uh, it's like really, really easy. And that just works. Um, finally, just a quick word about grep. If you do use grep, um, please remember to use the, the E like dash E or dash P as well for, for that goes even further. But what dash E does is it means extended uh, POSIX regular expressions. And it just means like normal regular expressions really because by default the POSIX standards uh, define that all the meta characters are not meta characters by default. And they have to be escaped to become meta characters, which is completely backwards from like in every language out there, where if you have, uh, let's say, braces, you have braces and they mean sub-pattern, but they're by default, they just mean braces. And so you have to escape them to mean sub-pattern, and it's, like, it's completely nuts. Um, so just alias this and, and never think about it again. Um, yeah. So a quick quiz, maybe, just to make sure you, you understood everything. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I'm not going to hold anyone responsible, but who thinks it does not match? <laughs> and who thinks it matches? Is it the others or just a bunch of uncertain people? <laughs> uh, so it does not match. Um, and the reason is that it's a look ahead. And as I mentioned before, look aheads do not capture, they do not match something. They just check that it's there. So if you, if you remove the, the IT there at the end, you just actually, this only matches the Q. And it checks that there's a U following it, but it does not match the U. So in the other case there, it does not match because after Q, then it will try to match I and it's just not there. So I hope it's clear now. <laughs> all right, um, so how do you keep your sanity uh, using all this? Again, my approach is to just use regular expressions uh, by default, it's just me, but I would recommend it just if, if only to keep your skills up to date. Uh, and the other thing is to really know the domain, right? Like I mentioned, HTML, for example, the, in every regex tutorial, they will tell you, like, never use regular expressions to match HTML. And yes, like, it's true. Like, if you want to match the whole scope of the HTML spec, it's insane. Like, there's no way to do this <laughs> with a regular expression because 
it's not a regular language and you have tons of exceptions and so you can't do it. But if you know that your HTML has been sanitized and you know that it's produced by this tool that only produces like, you know, B tags and this and like it's really, really simple, then it's okay, right? Because this, you know that you can match it and it's gonna be fairly safe. So again, it's, it's really a lot about the domain and not just about overall guidelines. You can't say use it for this because it's always gonna be perfect. No, it really depends on the use case. Uh, so if you do matching, I would recommend that you start very strict and not using dot plus everywhere because dot plus will just match stuff that you didn't expect. And then you end up with, you know, maybe security vulnerabilities or just bad things happening. Um, so just try to, to start very strict and expand whenever you have a need to expand. And one thing to, to really keep in mind there is use unit tests. Like really, regexes are, the, to me, is a perfect thing to use TDD for. Like if you, if you wanna try to use TDD ones, a regex is awesome for that because you, you can very easily have a, a set of, of strings that you expect to match, of strings that you expect not to match, and then you just, you know, hammer on your, your pattern until it passes all the tests. Awesome. Then next time you come, you come to it in two months trying to add a new thing to it, you still have your tests and you don't have to think, oh, yeah, there was this weird case I added that for, I'm not sure anymore. Mm -hmm. So really, like, testing is really, really important there. Um, finally, for boundaries, like, if you do matching, uh, especially of, like, words, uh, remember to use the backslash B because it really puts the, the boundary of the words in, in, like, it highlights that and it just solves a lot of problems. Uh, and if you do validation, just keep in mind the, the anchors just to make sure you don't validate that there is, you know, like a valid email somewhere in this string, just an actual, that all of the string is the valid email. Um, and yeah, just use documentation, like use the X for, for expanding the, the regex into multiple lines, use the named sub capture, uh, sub patterns, uh, just to, to have more clear code. So that's it. I hope that if you were scared before, you're a bit less scared now. Uh, and yeah, you don't have to go as far as loving them. That's okay. But anyway, I hope everyone learned something. And yeah, that's it. Thank you. Merci. Malheureusement, on n'a pas de temps pour les questions. On a 25 minutes de pause. Mais euh, je vous invite à profiter de cette pause si vous avez des questions pour euh, rencontrer Jordi. Donc yep. rendez-vous euh, à 4h15, euh, ici pour Rémi Collet, et euh, sur un retour d'expérience en salle B, euh, qui sera sur euh, le déploiement à la ruche qui dit oui. Merci. And just really quickly one thing, uh, check these links out. They are like, I use them to do the, the, the debugger view and so on, and this is really, really valuable uh, if you don't know what's, what's happening with a regular expression. So that's on, uh, on regex 101, and the left is the debugger button. And if you want the links, they're all up there. And I will also post the link on the on joined in. So that's it. Thanks.